Hi, in this video, I will be going through some of the basics of using LaTeX to write up homework and class notes and building up the template that I use. It's very simple, and if you would like to simply copy and paste the code, I will provide that on my blog. So start by creating an Overleaf account. You can do this for free, even if you don't have a school or university email address. I have never really needed any of the premium features, so I opted to make my Overleaf account with my personal email. This is because after graduation, institutions often deactivate old email addresses, and so you could lose your old files. You could always make another account and then transfer ownership of files, but that's a bit of a mess. And I've already gone through that process once as an undergraduate, so I've opted to just use my personal account unless they restrict the amount of features I can use in a free account. So let's make a template for homework assignments. I'm a physicist and will primarily be setting up this template for math and physics equations, but it's pretty versatile. So if you're not a physicist or a mathematician, don't worry, you can still get value from this tutorial. Start by creating a new project. Let's go with the blank project and call it homework template. All right, let's just do a few little cleanups here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make a few adjustments to the preamble background portion of this document so that it matches what we want to see in the final formatting. We're going to keep the document class article and for kicks we can keep this graphics package. I'm going to add a few more packages. I'm going to label them so that we have a general but clear understanding of what each package does. So that we can write non-ASCII, type use package and in the curly brackets, inputenc. <laughs> We're going to put these little square brackets out in front of it and fill it with UTF-8. Now I like to style my pages. We're going to use package again and this time we're going to be adjusting the margins. So if you see over here, this page has a one on it, which is great. I like having my pages numbered, but that one is really, really deep into the page. So it takes up a lot of space and I don't need to have that big of a margin. Additionally, you can see that the margin over here is really quite large as well. So. I am going to adjust my margins with the geometry package. Let's go back out in front, put in these little square brackets and set the margin by inches. So margin equals 0.6 inches is what I usually go for. Now we can hit command enter or command S on a Mac and that will recompile what we see over here in this PDF. Okay, so you can immediately see, first of all, it updated my name, which is great. And it moved this margin quite a bit further to the left and this one is really close to the bottom of the page. I like it that way, but you can change it however you like, that's totally fine. Next, let's enable multiple columns on the pages. I'm going to add multi-call and titling. There's different ways to go about this. You can make two use package lines, so each package has their own curly brackets, or you can make a list within the use package separated by a comma. So long as there isn't anything out in front that you're setting the specific package to go to, or Maybe you can even do it then. I, I just haven't tried it out and it seems like it might be a little confusing to the use package command, but maybe it works. Maybe, uh, maybe you can test it out. Okay, back to our multi-call package. Right now, without multi-call, when I haven't recompiled it or said make any separate columns, we have one big column. So if I started writing in here, okay, let me comment this out. By the way, uh, the percent sign comments out a single line. So if I started writing down here, then I recompile this, you can see that it goes all the way across the page. The next thing that I want to make sure I've got straight are my font and text packages. 
I'm going to copy this so they get the same amount of little percent signs and I'm going to label this font slash text packages. We're going to use package again. This one we're going to use Fontenk. <laughs> there we go. And square brackets T1. All right, the last text package I'm going to use is something that gives me the ability to make hyperlinks, either from external online sources or for referencing different equations or sections within the document itself. So hyperref, and then finally Caligra. I use that in some of my math, actually, but you know, it's still a font, so I'll put it in here. The last section is going to be for math and physics packages. Because there are so many of them, math packages can get kind of messy. Since there's so much online, it's easy to just copy and paste from different people's LaTeX files when you see something that you need, say for a new notation or kind of equation, but it can be pretty easy to lose track of which package is doing what, and I like to keep it as clean as possible. I won't go through all of their meanings, but these are the math packages that I use. I would highly recommend that you look up these packages and see what they do and see what packages you actually need. All right, so we have fully set up the file. At this point, we could start going and writing up homework, but the next step is really quite important in saving time, so we're going to go through that too. I'm going to enter a few times and make a good separator so that we can create some personalized commands. So in LaTeX, you can create your own commands, and this is really nice for simplifying equations especially. This is where things get really messy really quickly. Nested math mode commands are hard to debug, so it's much easier if you can just say, hey, this is one complete unit, there are no typos in it, and it's as compact as can be. Whatever problem you're running into, computer, it's coming from somewhere else. The only reason you could have bug issues with a personalized command is if you've got a problem with something surrounding it. Say I made a math command, but I didn't put it in math mode or in some sort of equation array, that would definitely be a problem, but it's not the command's problem, it's the fact that the command is not surrounded by the proper code. So I'm going to share with you some of my favorite commands that I like to save time with. First, we're going to start with some script letters, so let's do a few little separators, and we're going to call this one script R. I don't know if anyone watching this has ever studied any Griffith's textbooks, but he really loves to use this lowercase script R, so having a compact version is quite handy. To make a new command, we start with new command and then these curly brackets and square brackets appear. In the first box right here, we say what our command will be. So you're telling the computer, when I type X, you do Y. So this is our X. You need a backslash and then write out whatever you will be writing in order to call this command. Make sure that it's not a command that is a universally known to LaTeX. Make sure that it's a personalized command that you're not calling some other function that's already embedded in the math packages that you've installed. I say skr and then go over here and get rid of this little box for now. We can use that in a different new command, but not for this one. Now we're going to write text bold font and then caligra and then large and Finally, R. Now, when I write skr, all of this will happen, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute when we get down to actually starting the document up. Let's do that again for a script S, because the script S uh, is used many times as well. So this is going to be copied and pasted, and I'll make a few adjustments. Great. Now, the next one that I often use is the Lagrangian. I'm going to call this lag. <laughs> it's not the most complicated command, but it is a little simpler, and I prefer to write 
backslash lag than all the rest of that stuff. Anything to save time. All right, let's do equation arrays. Okay, so new command. Here we have to use the begin and end functions. So equation array like this will give you numbers on your equations. You can also do it with a little asterisk and that will get rid of the numbers in your equations. For a homework set, it depends on what you want to do. You can always individually suppress equation numbering, so I prefer to go with just equation array. Copy this to be a little faster and make adjustments. The next one, which I think really simplifies things, is one of my favorites, partial and full derivatives. All right, new command. So here I'm going to label this one PDE. The interesting thing about a derivative or a partial derivative is that you need to have something that you're taking a derivative with respect to. If it's a function that can be written compactly, you want to be able to put that compact version of the function on the top of the fraction-like sign. So you're going to want two inputs. So this little square box right here you're going to put a two in there. And so that will allow you to have two brackets after you type PDE, where you can put in the X or the Y or whatever you're taking the derivative with respect to, and whatever you're taking the derivative of. So let's go in here now. Frac will give us our fraction. And then in the top part of the fraction, which is this first set of brackets right here, you need to do partial. And then after our partial, we want the input. So we're going to do little curly brackets and then hashtag one. And so that will say whatever you put into the first curly bracket after your PDE, it'll go right here. All right, then you're going to do the same thing, partial denominator, but with hashtag two this time, right? Because we want the second curly bracket there. All right, now we're going to do the same thing actually for an ordinary differential equation. So I'm just going to copy this and make some adjustments. Right, so let's go ahead and test out some of this now in our document. First, let me change this date to the today function. Then let's set the number of columns in the document to two. All right, I'm just going to type some example test here. We can see that when we recompile this, we get two columns of text. Ooh, looks like I forgot the backslash on that date function. Now, I like to use sections for my individual problems because they create a chapter I can link to, as you see in the bottom left corner, problem one appears. Let's test out the equation array function now. Fill it with some random nonsense, okay? If we want to align an equation around some symbol, put an ampersand before and after the symbol, and make sure to put two backslashes at the end of each line to make a new line. So here, I've centered the equations around the equal sign. Now just to show you, I am going to suppress the numbering on this equation, okay? Let's test our partial differential equation function and make it a derivative of velocity with respect to time. Let's zoom in here to get a better look. And if I have a larger function, I'll just leave the first curly brackets empty and write my function after the second pair. <laughs> Never mind that uh, this math really makes no sense, but uh, let's now try a full derivative and a script R and script S. Okay, I really have given up on the math making sense here, but let's do some little tricks. If I want a space in math mode, I can add a tilde or three. And the Lagrangian seems to be working well. One thing to note is the autofill. So if we do an inline math equation, this does work the way we hope. But 
Now let's try putting the same command into an equation array. You'll see that if I try to use the autofill, it won't give me the curly brackets anymore. If I delete all the instances of the function being used in the inline double dollar sign mode, then the function can once again autocomplete in the equation arrays. I'm not exactly sure why this is, maybe one of you knows and can share that, but for me, what usually ends up happening is that I write out the functions the long way when I'm using inline code, and then I use the shortcuts when using equation arrays. I find this doable because I don't really use the double dollar sign math mode that frequently, and I would simply prefer the autofill curly brackets. Let's test out inserting images into the file. First, upload the image, and then use the include graphics function. I like to start by setting the scale to 0.5 and inserting the image. Then I can see how much I need to adjust the sizing. If you expect to use a lot of images in a particular document, I would recommend creating an images folder and storing the images there. If we run this same code again, however, you'll see that it is really angry because it doesn't know where to look for this JPEG. We need to first tell it what folder to look in, and then we can tell it the image name. Fantastic! I hope that you got something valuable out of this video, and happy lateking!